Uh, poets are uh, constantly reminded that they should write about death, and I, I thought in the very beginning of my career I would avoid it. But of course, you know, I recorded the Extreme Unction for James Douglas Morrison on a Hen House uh, compilation CD. And over the years, I have uh, written what you might call eulogies, uh, uh, not funeral odes necessarily, I mean, but there is one to my maternal grandmother that I think might be indicative. The title is, A Grandmother Grows Distantly on High. It is too far to the side of night, how she dreams now in her highest hours, how pitiful in her final sleep. It's as if an entire family's funeral watch weeps in order to give more time to her thirsty heart. Everything that keeps us safe in the sight of what we call nature falls with the force of a snowstorm. But there is no snow, no bright, no delicate, no melting thing anywhere that eventually disappears as precious as she has been. And you really never knew before this that there was anywhere she could go without taking you along. Inside, where a fireplace rages, a winter's catch of relatives gives up her warm ghost. Outside, there's only that cold cry of the rain. I did a reading with Stephen J. Kalinich, Bill Duke, and Lisa K. Thayer. And it was kind of fortuitous, in a sense, because I was right on the verge of collaborating with a friend of mine, a writer uh, named Rex Weiner. And we had fantasized and bounced around an idea that we wanted to pay tribute to Jack Kerouac and all of his satellites. And these were the, uh, not so much the beat generation as a title uh, uh, that was put them in some kind of a pigeonhole, but these writers really kicked away the jams and knocked down the doors of literature, changed literature forever. And we wanted to pay some kind of homage to the aura of the era, in a sense. All of the writers that kind of surrounded him and even those that were just kind of on the periphery, guys like uh, uh, John Logan and uh, Sid Corman. We wanted to bring it all together in some kind of a literary focus and make it happen. And when we were talking about actors and writers and musicians who were going to portray these people, it was automatic. I thought, I thought automatically I'm thinking, Lisa and Stevie and Bill would be absolutely perfect for this. And then uh, this wonderful woman, Eve Branstein, who is an unstoppable uh, force in, in, in Los Angeles culture. She's a, a writer and a painter. And, and she said, oh, I've, I've got to be involved in this. I studied with Diane De Prima, Ann Waldman, and Allen Ginsberg. So she was absolutely totally in tune with what we were doing. So we decided, uh, Rex and I thought, well, let's call John Densmore, the, the drummer of, of uh, exceptional notoriety. And he said, you know, he, and he said, I want to read Gary Snyder. So here we have this, this incredible cast of people, of about nine or 10 people. Uh, and I shouldn't say portray, because they were really just reading the work in a, a very reverential way, and uh, and it worked. It was.
it's like they became the essence of these people. They weren't imitating them, they weren't trying to look like them. They were just all of a sudden transformed and became the essence of these people. Uh, when I wanted to write an anti-war poem, to imitate passion, I looked around and it was only, there was a mild skirmish going on in Southeast Asia. Laos was beginning to percolate. So I thought, well, why don't I just amplify it a little bit and I'll, I'll turn this Vietnam War thing into a, into a big war. So I wrote this piece uh, that eventually got published in Germany, of Germany of all places. Uh, this, my imitation of uh, passion, this anti-war poem. It was called, uh, War is Sleeping on the Face of Everything. War closes its eyes in the bad disgraced, even in pomp and ceremony. Where flags are impressive streamers, there is smothering nosy remnants as we are sniffing the final throbbing heroin of our universal breath. We will see the death of American towns just as Denver is an accidental island. How it sinks like Atlantis into a sea of aimless and complacent plains. Yes, war is sleeping on the face of everything. And perhaps we'll curse, perhaps we'll pray. Somewhere, inside some astonished, firebombed, doomed, and frightened wheat field, and then totally realize Christ, God, that the world. Now, I, I could have said, uh, what I started to write was, Christ, God, that the world is suffering and dying. Christ, God, that the world is uh, being destroyed. Christ, God, that the world needs to be redeemed. But I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna let the reader finish that and just say, that the world, exclamation point, and make that the, the barbed commentary.